So in uh, this video we're going to be talking about the rise in domestic abuse and also the um, some of the longer term uh, problems with the government's new uh, domestic abuse bill. So let's dig into this one. So here we've got uh, Theresa May talking about how the lockdown must take into account um, the fact that domestic abuse has is on the rise and that the obviously the harm implications that has um, kind of compared to the coronavirus saying that you know like having a lockdown is good but at the same time there are other problems um, afoot. Um, so the, pri the prim former Prime Minister said uh, measures to tackle the coronavirus must not do more damage than the disease, it disease itself. Um, she spoke as MPs to make the domestic abuse bill um, amid rising evidence of rising violence during the lockdown. So uh, Justice uh, Secretary Robert Buckland said help would be available for such victims during the outbreak. Um, so there's been a surge of um, domestic abuse since the lockdown with um, na the National Debu uh, Domestic Abuse Help Helpline um, uh, calls up by 49%. So th the calls essentially to this um, specific refuge have gone up by 49%. Um, so addressing uh, MPs, uh, Ms May said the government must think about the impact of the lockdown on our overall health and well-being. She said police and local authorities should consider doing random visits to to the homes of known domestic abuse perpetrators during the lockdown or addresses where there have been reports of violence. So the fact that there have been reports of violence and that these domestic abuse, um, abuser, uh, domestic, abu domestic abusers are known, but nothing has been done about it for some reason. I don't, I don't know why that is. Um, but added that it would have to be done carefully to not make the situation worse. So if you know someone's committing a domestic abuse, then, uh, you know, the, the smart thing, or I guess the intelligent thing to do would be to actually arrest them, but then that causes other certain other problems, uh, especially if that person is the breadwinner, which they usually are. And so I'll go into more details about some of the things that they should really uh, be doing or should have done a long time ago. So Miss May's uh, government introduced the domestic abuse bill last July, but it has been postponed um, because of the general election. Um, it brings uh, new protections for victims, including the uh, domestic abuse protection orders and protection notices, uh, which can be used to impose longer term bans, long term bans on perpetrators making contact uh, with the victims. Uh, what they should also be uh, doing is making some sort of public database of um, domestic abusers and so that you can search people up. So if you are entering a new relationship uh, with a person, you can actually search up and see if they've committed any crimes like that. At the same time, obviously, they can use um, pseudonyms, but um, at least you're offering something. And then you can obviously find out if someone is using a pseudonym um, by checking identification or something like that, if you do think someone's a bit moving a bit dodgy. Um, and so Buckland um, told MPs that the domestic abuse bill aimed to raise awareness of the of crime of the crime uh, to protect and support victims and their children to transform the response. And so here we've got some analysis or what passed an, uh, as analysis at the BBC. The government has always stressed that the domestic abuse bill is determination to tackle the problem has been described as an epidemic in the UK. The bill drafted before the lockdown creates a statutory uh, definition of domestic abuse, emphasising it's not just physical, it can involve coercive or controlling behaviour and financial constraints. These provisions go to the heart of what, uh, what could now be happening in homes up and down the country, or what's already happened in homes up and down the country, even pre-coronavirus. Uh, domestic abuse charities have seen huge increase in calls and online requests to help during the lockdown. The victims are suffering both mentally and physically in homes that are not places of safety. Many of the traditional escape routes have been cut off. Um, the pandemic on top of a pandemic on top of an epidemic, one uh, victim described it. And so Labour has proposed an amendment that will see a 10% increase of the £750 million pounds, uh, charity support package this month, ring fenced and um, in a fast track fund for domestic abuse charities. That sounds like it's nowhere near enough given everything that's happening. Uh, MPs also said the, said, so this is some of the positives of the bill. MPs have also said the bill must do more to protect victims regardless of their immigration status and to, oh, this, that's something they haven't done actually, that's, they haven't actually protected um, illegal immigrants um, with this domestic abuse bill uh, and to ensure there is adequate accommodation across the board for victims who flee their homes. Um, so there, here is, this is the positive bit here. So um, MP um, Mark Garney's constituent, Natalie Connolly, um, died in 2016 after sustaining more than 40 separate injuries, but her boyfriend was cleared of murder in 2018 on the basis of um, a defence of rough sex gone wrong. Um, how can it be possibly be that a person dies through sex? It doesn't make sense, especially when she had 40, uh, 40 wounds, uh, 40 separate injuries. Um, and so it's very, like, how, how this person won on such a defence, I have no idea. Um, it's just it's just silly. 
really um, charities have called for the domestic abuse bill to offer more support to victims it includes including requiring councils to provide uh, support for victims and their children in refugees and other safe accommodation um, so that's really the key points of it uh, the government said it would spend 3.1 million on services supporting children whose witnesses uh, who witness appalling abuse uh, at home during the coronavirus lockdown so that's only short term uh, funding for a, sh- a short term goal really um the funds will be given to council charities and police and crime commissioners uh, crime commissioners are a bit of a joke uh, to be fair in england and wales and go towards uh, services such as counseling sessions and early intervention schemes um, but here we have uh, Shadow Nick Thomas um, saying uh, the amount falls woefully short and of what is needed by vital uh, frontline services. And um, finally, we've got a point from the Attorney General Suella Braverman saying that um, uh, stress that domestic abuse victims will not be breaking the law if they need help to seek help from outside during the lockdown. Um, she told MPs, I want to take this opportunity to let victims, both men and women, um, know what they have, uh, that they don't have to suffer in silence. And so um, this bill does not go far enough. And so if we look here, um, you know, this, you know, the fact that two, um, two women a week are killed in domestic abuse cases. Um, but because three quarters of domestic abuse services have reported having to reduce their services because of uh, self-isolating isolation and social distancing requirements. So um, this week, the domestic abuse bill. So this was on the 26th of April. So obviously not this week. Um, so the bill uh, provides nowhere near the level of resourcing that is needed to help keep people safe like all locally funded funded services those um for domestic abuse have faced significant cuts over the last decade um the extra funding announced by the government in february for refugees and services will not fill the gap um and the number of refuge spaces is a third lower than recommended by the council of europe and there's been no extra funding allocated for community services community services are really important to help people because they're an easy accessible place to go to um your local community center um, which are accessed by most domestic abuse uh, survivors. Whilst the legislation would give police greater domestic powers to enforce domestic abuse protection orders, the government is planning no resources for training for already stretched forces. So the government is saying, like, we're going to make these changes, um, but without putting the money on the table, it's going to be very hard for police to do anything about it because they don't have the funding to deal with anything, uh, deal with problems as is, uh, let alone deal with um, more, more, um, more things. And so if the government were actually... Um, trying to help they would put the money on the table essentially and this is a point that the uh the editorial board make the cost of properly um resourcing domestic abuse services pales in comparison to its huge social cost so the actual cost of domestic abuse which the government estimates to be around 66 billion a year is small change compared with the vast sums that have been found uh, rightly to protect people through the pandemic for um abuse victims and their children and so the point they're making is that you found money to uh, help uh, for a pandemic but you haven't found any money enough money to help people that are victims of domestic abuse and people that are dying um essentially being killed um the abuse bill does nothing to also recognize the um the impact on migrant women specifically um victims uh, especially uh, people who are here um illegally who don't have citizenship here and essentially they can't go to seek help purely because um if they do get help they'll be deported and that's something that the abusers know as well and they'll always hold it over them that if you go to get help you will be deported from this country and so the government should put some sort of pathway to citizenship uh for domestic abuse um victims and survivors and that if they come forward they will not be deported that they will look for uh, to try and help these people out through some sort of visa scheme, whether it's temporary or permanent um, uh, visa slash uh, citizenship, um, to help people seek um, to help people who are victims of domestic abuse. And uh, finally, if we go to this report here, um, so the study that was cited, the 66 billion figure comes from this study, um, and essentially um, there are limitations with this study. So um, you know the authors write the analysis from this study would have benefited from a larger sample size. Um, and also the fact that it doesn't take into account the cost of long-term therapy for uh, children who witness domestic abuse uh, as well and so here it is there so um, what we can see is the fact that that 66 billion figure could be higher because there'd be a lot of people going to um, you know social services and hospitals to get counseling and also getting private counseling because they witnessed or were victims of domestic abuse and that's something that this um, study doesn't take into account um, mainly because they didn't have the resources to figure things out or the fact that they just didn't have the time um and so we can see that that 66 billion figure could be much higher and if we actually look here uh if we go down in their appendix in the appendix so you can see look 
um, you know, ambulances being called out for broken bones. But you can see, um, you know, the, the massive amount of uh, injuries that happen. And um, if you go further down, you can see uh, the cost, the average unit cost um, for, you know, dealing with broken bones, severe bruising, being stabbed, um, internal injuries, all of these things. And, um, you know, if we go scroll further down here, costs of homicides, the emotional costs, total unit costs. And here it comes down to these, these are the uh, thousands um, and so if we go here look this is the billions these are the total costs you know physical the cost of you know emotional and physical harm um, domestic abuse there uh, lost output health services unit costs that's being put at the the cost of you know domestic homicides at uh, 0.2 billion so what's that 2 million uh, I think and you got the violence with injury at 32 32 billion uh, violence without injury at 9 billion, uh, rape 2 billion and so all of these costs here and if, if we actually help victims from the start, people who are victims of more verbal abuse and um, you know victims that are being controlled not through um, violent actions but through um, coercion, not, not, not you know stopping people from going outside and things like that, meeting their friends, if we actually help people at that point and um, put in harsher sentences and um, things like that and had more social workers and more police force that were better trained and had more numbers to deal with these things then you would you'd actually save money long term and these guys won't listen to a moral argument the, the government and um, other people and they'll say you know we don't have the money to help everyone but you know the fact is if if you can save money whilst helping people in the long term because of the cost of domestic abuse it's a no-brainer it's genuinely it's a no-brainer and so I don't understand why the government haven't put more money to actually help domestic abuse victims. Um, because you can actually save money. That's the joke. You'd actually save money um, if you actually help these people. Because you wouldn't have as much violent crime if you help people um, when it goes from the, the verbal stage, essentially. Um, and you can actually help people, not just the, the first victims of um, an abuser, but also the future victims by making databases and uh, making it so that... Um, you know, people, you know, finding a way to police people to stop the meeting of the people, making a database, making it, um, you know, making lists of, of known domestic abusers and warning people that, you know, the person you're talking to is has been convicted of domestic abuse. And you can actually help future victims, but the government haven't done that for some reason. Successive governments, um, are obviously, but at the same time, you know, by the these conservative governments, May, Boris and um, Cameron, have um, essentially cut services and what that's done it's allowed abusers to get away with more things because um, essentially the police forces are stretched the courts are stretched um, legal legal aid's been cut and so it's much harder for people to actually get help also the fact that there's a lack of social housing so if you're a, a, a lack of social housing and refugees a refu refugees refugees um, it makes it harder for a victim to leave the place that they're being abused in and go somewhere safe um, and so what we can see that, you know, the longer that they're in the sphere of the abuser, the more chance they have of, you know, suffering, you know, more physical abuse and also being killed. Um, and so the government have to do more here. Clearly these bills aren't enough. You have to help, um, you know, even um, people that are here illegally as well, um, because if 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 they die, how does it, you know, that... <sighs> You, you could stop someone from being killed. You know, just because someone's here illegally doesn't mean that they don't deserve help. That money shouldn't be set aside to help them as well. And the fact is, the government just aren't doing enough. And it's a joke, uh, to be honest. And so, look, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, you know, if we can't make an, a moral argument to people. Clearly, they're not listening. At least we could do is make an economic one and say that it makes, it makes absolute sense to help people. Because they're not listening to the morality of it. They're, they're only listening to when it comes to cash, when it comes to numbers. And so the government has to put the money on the table and actually help these people. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, should the government be doing more and what else could they do? If you guys have any ideas, leave in the comments below and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.